that like 645 time slot will come in and I literally just start shutting my shit down. People are still talking at me, still going, da, da, da. And I'm like, I'm going, I'm going to the gym. I'm not doing anything else. If I don't go, I won't go. This conversation will last 45 more minutes. Like I just gotta go to the gym, yeah. you know? Anyways, all right, so back to Rolex. Hey guys, it's Cam with Craft and Tailored. In this episode of What Is On My Wrist, we are talking about a Rolex pre-Daytona chronograph. This one is from 1946. The reference is 3525, and it's commonly referred to as the POW or Rolex Prisoner of War. Really cool watch, very early Rolex chronograph, um, ton of history around these, and this is an exceptional example. So let's get into the details. So pre-Daytona, yeah. It exists. You know, Rolex made chronographs uh, before the Daytona. Um, one of my favorite chronographs, I think, is probably the 3525 or maybe the 6234s. I think there's a lot of value in these chronographs. They possess an artfulness to the design and ultimate layout and kind of to the craftsmanship that you don't see in some of the later Daytonas, like a 6263 or 6265. I'm not saying that I don't like those Rolexes, but I think there's an element of fine watchmaking and attention to detail that you get in the pre-Daytonas that you don't really get in the Daytona range of watches. I think Rolex was moving from kind of like an artful watchmaker in that, in that era in time to doing things where it was like more form meeting function. So this 3525 I think demonstrates Rolex's ability to make something that was kind of technical and ruggedized and tool-like, but something that also possessed guilting and fine craftsmanship and stuff that you would see almost like in the pocket watch era of Rolex or from other brands that maybe we wouldn't think of as you know Rolex, even though it's still a sports watch. So before we talk about this watch in specific, um, I want to talk a little bit about why um, the 3525s have the name POW. So produced in the 1940s, the Rolex pre-Daytona chronograph reference 3525s are nicknamed the prisoner of war or POW due to the fact that it was one of the models made available to captured allied soldiers during World War II. Rolex founder Hans Wilsdorf personally oversaw a program in which detained troops could write to Rolex and request a wristwatch, and that would be sent to them entirely on the honor system. We'll send you one and pay us when you can pay us, right? So while a good number of models were offered to allied prisoners of war, 3525 was the most popular model and the most commonly seen watch that was given to the POWs on this on this honor system. So the other thing too, which is really cool, is this is a Rolex Oyster chronograph. So this has an Oyster crown, it's got water resistant pushers. Think about the Daytonas, like a 6239 or a 6241. Those are not Oyster Daytonas, right? It wasn't until the 6240 and then ultimately the 6263 and the 6265 in which Rolex said, okay, these are waterproof Oyster Rolexes. But the 3525 is an Oyster chronograph, which I think back in the day, Rolex would have said that that was waterproof. Whether that's true or not, it does come with water resistant pushers and then a locking crown. Similar to what you would see in like, let's say like a you know, any of the pre-Daytonas and then obviously the early Daytonas like a 6239 or a 6241. So um, the 3525 is really cool because it comes fitted with a Valju manually wound chronograph movement. It's a two register chronograph and the chronograph subdials are, are pretty small. There's a couple of different variants of the 3525. This one obviously is in stainless steel. What's really interesting about the watch is that you've got these two subdials, but also you've got a tachometer scale and a telemeter scale on the outer portion of the dial. So that's pretty valuable to somebody that is captured to be able to measure something like speed or like telemeter. You could measure, you know, uh, the distance of an incoming round as a result of using your chronograph to, to time things. And also, I think the other thing that I, I find really interesting about this is if you're, uh, you know, a prisoner, having the ability to tell the time, I think is such a luxury in that time and place. Like days blend into months, months blend into years, right? In some cases, and you have this thing that is able to track time and also record time, which I think is something that was like so cool. And I, and I don't know if Hans really realized that, maybe he did, but to send these watches to POWs and to give them the ability to not only just tell the time and to track the time and or to record the time, I think was like such a, a cool thing for him to ultimately 
ultimately do. So the 3525 chronograph was actually used by the soldiers who escaped the German Stalag Luft III POW camp, which later served as the inspiration for the 1963 Steve McQueen film, The Great Escape. The particular example that we have here today is obviously a little bit later, obviously it being from 1946. One of the cool things is that we actually have the original mess card. Uh, from the uh, original owner. So this watch was owned and purchased by First Lieutenant David E. Johns. So this actually accompanies this watch, which is in really well and nicely preserved condition. And let's talk a little bit about the details of this watch specifically, and then provide some kind of tech spec on the, on the 3525. 3525 chronograph pre-Daytona. Um, the watch measures 35 millimeters across, but it really wears more like I would say a 40. This oyster uh, you know, locking crown on the side does kind of stick off the case. And the other thing that's really interesting about the watch is that it's a chronograph with flat sides to the case. So you know, it kind of wears a little bit larger than it really is. The dial's really interesting because you have a gilted dial. The, the hands and the major markers on the dial are in yellow gold, which is really, really nice. The dial's kind of this off, kind of almost ivory white, and it has a really nice kind of even patina throughout. The tachymeter and the telemeter scale is on the outer side of the bezel, whereas you have, you know, minutes at the three o'clock position, running seconds at the nine o'clock position, and then you have this nice sweep seconds hand. So I mentioned earlier in the video that these watches were were also produced in two-tone and also in solid gold. The stainless steel versions of the watches are really what is commonly referred to and known as the POW because those were obviously watches that were given to the POWs. So the dial on this watch specifically um, is in very well-preserved con condition. There's blemishes throughout the dial just that are kind of like through age. It's very consistent. Some of the dials and hands that were installed on a Rolex Oyster Chronograph reference 3525 were fitted with a radium loom and the versions fitted to this specific example are non-luminous, which I, I really like. Commonly, the dials and hands that are filled with radium in the 3525, you'll see excessive degradation in those dials typically because the radium degrades the dial. Additionally, these watches being early sports watches, they were typically put through their paces, whether it be in steel or two-tone or in gold, and them not being the most waterproof watches, water intrusion, dust, kind of the elements, has a tendency to degrade the original dial. So the fact that this one possesses a dial that has nice, even, and consistent patina throughout, and it's a non-radium version, allowed this watch to kind of survive and also you know, maintain this you know, beautiful dial that does show patina, but in a very honest and kind of an original way. I would say most likely this watch has not been polished. It's been worn for sure, but the case shows a sharpness to the flat sides and to the bezel. You can kind of feel it as you run your hands over the case. There's that angle and that kind of original geometry. Although worn, the case is in really, really great condition and I've really been enjoying this watch while on wrist. In any case, these are really cool watches. I'm really excited to have this one. I love that, you know, we still have the original mess card, which, you know, Lieutenant Johns used to actually receive his meals while in service. And it's just such a nice, you know, piece to have. And it's just wears so nicely on the wrist. So thanks so much guys for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps us out. If you are not doing so already, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Craft and Tailored. And if you've got watch questions, we're here and happy to help. Drop us a line at info at craftandtailored.com. I will see you guys in the next one. Dude, I'm a fucking beast. I go to the gym for an hour every day, really? at least. I'm working out constantly for an hour and then I have about 30 to 45 minutes of cool down time. And that's when I do like my steam, my sauna. Oh, yeah, awesome. I get my nails done. You know I've what I'm heard, saying? Heard, my, like, my brows done. Yeah.